to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Uh, first item of business is approval of the March 16th study session minutes. Moved to approve. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Next up, public comments. Yes, ma'am. Please come forward, tell us your name, address. And I know half of that. <laughs> yeah, even more half of that. That's a bit. 113 Cliff Drive. But I want to start off by saying that in the depot, there's a white leather breast, black, orange, and yellow painting on it. There's a sash, there's a bag, there's a set of leggings, set of moccasins, a doll, a sheet, and a knife, and a coyote. Those were donated to the museum by me, and I want them back. And now I'm going to tell you why. I don't want my name affiliated with this town at all anymore. I am so upset with what's happening in this town. Pitiful, disgraceful. Now, I had several things, but I know you're going to be to my time frame, so I'm going to get right to it. On Christmas Eve of last year, at 11, we were 11, 11, 30. There was a, an assault at the grocery store in town. But the police department never responded. They didn't have time to. They were investigating a death, is what the store was told. Okay? I thought, by law, that any time somebody hit somebody, that that was a criminal case. But I guess it's not anymore. But that is a fact. That's what the hell happened. And after the incident took place at the grocery store, the young man who did it was so pissed that he got in his car and he went down. He went that way. He went into the Dollar General. But in the Dollar General, this part is hearsay. First part isn't, this part is. In the Dollar General, he was so pissed off because what had happened at the grocery store, and they made him leave, and, and at least the grocery store people cared enough about their customers that somebody made sure that that person got into their car all right. But he went down to the Dollar General, and he was so frustrated, he pulled out a damn knife. He had the girl behind the cash register so upset, she was crying. Everybody in the store was freaked out. You know there was a lot of people because it was Christmas Eve. I, I don't mean to interrupt. The, the individual that went to Dollar General, the person that got assaulted or the person who was doing the assaulting? The person that did the assaulting. Okay, and I know this for a fact. And now I'm gonna tell you why. Because the person that was assaulted in the grocery store, because I am stopping at lemons, for our Christmas Eve dinner was me. This is a disgrace. I served on this board. And this is the way that you are going to treat your citizens? How dare you? How dare you? I have absolutely no respect at all anymore. What this city has proven to me is that the city doesn't give a damn about the citizens of this town. They don't give a damn about the ordinances or people follow the ordinances. They don't give a damn about the people that lived in this town for 40 years and to pay taxes. I even told you before this meeting started that I didn't get my damn water bill. I'm on top of it. I might be old, but I'm on top of it. How dare you treat us like this? You spent more time taking care of Peggy the damn dog than the citizens in this town. And what that tells me is that if anything is gonna to happen to me, I damn straight can't count on none of you to come to my aid. And if I was sitting in any one of these chairs, I would be totally ashamed for a citizen in this town. 
to come in here and show you this. That's it. business discussion and consideration of possible acts regarding Tyler uplift proposal but the gentleman in the back <coughs> Maintenance, 
from Microsoft. Um, however, they said that it is not certified yet. And if we were to go that option, they would not support us. The, the 2020, there's one that runs out of the, in the third quarter. That was the 2012 version, right? Correct. So, but if we went with the 2019 version, it is supported? It is. Yes. And do you have any idea at all? Is, is it, none of these numbers represent yeah. the price for that? Is the, Two, option, two. option two is uh, what? Is that twenty million? Yeah, well, over nineteen hundred dollars. Option two is we get the upgrade. We hope so. so. Yeah. On, on premises in the closet here right now. And, and our risk on that is obviously hardware gets damaged or outdated or what have you. The server is running on that. That's one of our risks around that. If we do option two, that would be one risk. That is a risk. And then, then, then the other was that uh, if Tyler Tech wants to go to version 8, it won't run on the 2019. Is that correct? Uh, it will. Uh, well, we can't say for sure at this moment. Uh, but based on what I have looked at on the packet of what is supported, what is not supported, uh, version 8 is supported with 2019. Or I anticipate that it would be supported. Until they can <coughs> certify the 2022 version. Correct. So actually, then that wouldn't be a terrible option if we were just looking to bridge to the 22 came out, would that be? So what I would recommend is uh, go with 2019, go to the length of the entire what is supported, and then reevaluate at that point. Because at that point, maybe 2024, 26, whatever new SQL version is out, then it, it elongates that. I don't think it would, in my assessment, makes sense to do 2019 and as soon as they certify spend another good point close to two thousand dollars to upgrade yet again and how do you feel about the hardware we have you feel that it's adequate and we should i mean any, any concerns you have about imminent failure or obsolescence it, it is older techno older servers um that much i, I will say um, is it latest and greatest no um it's better than what we had before. Um, did you, do you have any additional The one major concern I would have in this entire scenario is backups. Um, you guys are, currently don't have a very good backup solution. We would, be, we would really like to take a place in place on that. So Which I think that was addressed last time I was up here in front of you guys. <coughs> yeah, because I mean, if we look at the difference there between option two and then three and four, we could afford to do some. Yeah, you guys need to afford the hardware for the backups at that point. Yeah, what I would like to see is... Uh, and that affects more than just the SQL server. That affects all of the stuff. Yeah, well, with option know. two, nothing backs up to the cloud anymore. Correct. It, it backs up here on site. And included in that is, uh, if I may, uh, is what we, if we were to go with option two, uh, we could save, save, spend that money to do not only backups on premises, but do off-site backups. Yes. So that way, if there is a going disaster or flood or whatever may happen, we have at least another off-site backup available. Like that. Yeah. Which could be as simple as just putting another device mm -hmm. over JD's office. As long as JD doesn't get all the crazy. <laughs> yeah, and, that's, and that's what our, my thought was <coughs> option number two. We could build our own infrastructure with the money we save slowly instead of rushing and spending 20, 30,000 right off the bat. We can build it ourselves and you know, be awesome. We can just upgrade it when we need it and build it slowly. What's kind of a rough cost of a backup type stuff? I know you didn't do quotes or anything, but just a rough guess. Sure. Uh, can we do any numbers on that? If it's five grand, twenty grand, ten. It, it's definitely not going to be more than about. I would say no more than ten thousand dollars. Some people think it was around ten or twelve. Okay. Time. Yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. I think just it was curious. around ten or twelve for the backup solution. So okay. So would the uh, would the board be comfortable with them proceeding to put together another quote, looking at number two with the backup and what have you? So we're not having to just chase your tail with ideas. <laughs> like, uh, go okay. find another idea. <laughs> okay. All right. Sounds like uh, if you can go find a, how to make two work with some backups, and uh, think we're getting closer to the point. Okay. Well, thank you, gentlemen. We appreciate your time this evening. Thank you. This is new business. Possible consideration of <laughs> the collection.
regarding changing the water bills for postcards. Uh, you'll see back here there's a, it wasn't as much cost savings as I thought. It saves us a little bit of a I think honestly it may stack out to be a little more because I heard it was taking multiple people three days to stuff envelopes and what have you. So <coughs> I just figured 24 man hours or 15 bucks an hour is $360 a month that we're saving. So uh, I mean, we'd have to probably skinny up the messaging on the water bills a little bit, but uh, it may be easier. And, then we, and I didn't look to see. Uh, the current water bills, I guess we'd still have to, the citizens kind of buy the stamp on that, so we don't get to return it. Right, faster too, isn't it? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'd hope so, but I don't yeah. know that. Any, any discussion? So just the annual savings per year would be uh, a little over 2600 Yeah, but the, that's the cash side, and then obviously should free Casey and the ladies up front. A little well, bit of what are labor yeah. 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 Oh, that be right now. Yeah. So with that, with the labor included, we're probably closer to three thousand. Well, I think that when I looked in here because it had sorting and printing, I assumed that that had the labor cost in. Do you know? Because yeah, so, yeah. when I divided that back, it was like sixteen cents an hour. Okay. Gotcha. And they probably have right. Right. The only right now. Fine. Casey really has to trifold with each bill. Yeah. And Physically stuff it into the envelope and put them in the box and take it down to the post office. And you're talking a thousand, ninety six bills a month. Well, whether or not we save twenty six hundred dollars or not, if it's a labor thing, get streamlining the the front office there, I think it'll be worth looking into or doing. Is that a motion to approve? So we have <laughs> second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Mr. Mayor, before we adjourn the regular session, is there, are there, I know I missed the meeting, was there any discussion about a citywide cleanup? Yes, it was on the water bill. Yeah, uh, May 20th? Yeah, yeah, May it's 20th. the third weekend in May. I actually read my water bill this morning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up is uh, recess to executive session. Notice is hereby given that the mayor and board of aldermen will conduct an executive session. Pursuant to Missouri Revised Statute 610.021 sub 2, to discuss litigation, leasing, purchase, or sale of real estate by public governmental body. Motion approved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? To reconvene. Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, we are back in session, bringing us to elected officials' comments. Yes, sir. Sorry, anybody else want to start? <laughs> I got a few things here, so bear with me. Um, have we got a estimated date, uh, time frame for the uh, Jefferson Street project when it might begin? Oh, yeah, mid May. Mid May. Okay. Cool. Um, and before I go on this next rant, I just want the PD to understand that I fully support you guys, but some of the things that I'm seeing in town have highly got me on edge. I've had personal dealings with Sergeant Turner, with Officer McNair, and Officer Hickman, and they've been great. So, just don't, this isn't just towards any particular person. The Easter event that the park put on was a lot of fun. Uh, for those of us that was up there, good time. I seen the fire department, I seen the EMS, I didn't see PD. There's a ton of people up there, and we didn't have one police officer up there. That's concerning. When we have a big event, any, if I go to another event, in another city, I see police officers regardless what it is. Um, and there is kind of a nice public relation type of situation there. Um, so that was my first issue. Um, the next one was, I know over the weekend there was a situation that came up where a nine year old had a gun in, their, in his hoodie. Um, I know this has been a very uh, stressful situation for the individual involved, but supposedly this nine year old had a gun in his hoodie called the father called PD, no one on duty. Uh, Jackson County won't come because it's not an emergency. What's the deal with nobody on duty? I mean, it's a weekend type of situation. I mean, are we having scheduling problems? Do we not have enough police officers? What's the deal with, with that? Because to me, that kid having a nine millimeter loaded, that's a big problem. 
I mean, especially with what's going on in the world today. I mean, it was said that he was playing uh, basketball with another group of kids. What if he got mad and another kid pulled up the gun and shot him? Oh, we got to wait on Buckner PD because nobody's on duty. Oh, we got to wait for Jackson County to get out of here. We can't take care of the problem because we don't got nobody here. So I guess that just gives us the kind of understanding why nobody was on duty at that particular time. Do you want a response? I do. Okay. We didn't find out about it until two days, 48 hours after this occurred. Okay. My response to that is he called and nobody was on duty. So if he called, and you know, we know who we're talking about. We, right. we both know the situation. So that's exactly. We did a follow-up. Yeah. Follow -up. yeah. Well, and that's another issue all on its own, but he can handle that. that that's not that's kind of my, with the school and all that stuff. But my, my concern is if he called that night when it was reportedly happened, we had nobody on duty. So you would have, or not you in particular, but the police department would have known about it if somebody was on duty. Correct. Okay, so that's my, that's my problem there. You see what I'm saying? Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, we have talked about it. We got it corrected. Uh, what happened was we had one officer who was put in a week's vacation notice. Prior to that, was approved for that, so we was down one officer already. And then we had another officer that was supposed to go to training, so he was off that night, so he could make a training the next day. And then we had uh, the officer that was on duty for the weekend worked Friday day to cover the guys that went to training on Friday. That being said, but uh, we have me and the chief has talked. The chief has contacted the Jackson County Sheriff Dispatch and told them from now on all calls go directly to him and he can answer the calls 24 hours 7 and he, he can dictate the police officers to go out. Right. Which ones? If, what if nobody's on duty, instead of them calling and having them say, hey, nobody's on duty, I'm sorry. Up till do. now, I haven't been notified not one time by the county. By the county. So the county's got his number now, and he's going to be the kind of okay. the first one that they call. So this won't happen again. That he will be made aware of it, and he can make the corrections. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank okay. you. Okay. Well, and in addition, though, our officer who was off, uh, he told us yesterday he's got COVID. So mm -hmm. that's that's what we're facing with. And uh, just to let you all know. Uh, we've interviewed several several uh, people who applied for police position. Uh, I will not hire, I won't even bring them to Joe uh, if they are less than honorable. And the people that have applied have, have been fired <coughs> from other departments. And I don't think you guys want somebody like that. So Appreciate well, that. Yeah, we do appreciate well, that. And, and it's not just us, you know, Eddie Turner, who's a good friend of mine, who took over uh, at Green Valley. Uh, of course, they've got more officers than we've got, but they're down to, it's the same everywhere. Uh, IPD is offering a $10,000 bonus, sign on bonus, to sign on their department. The day you start, you get $10,000 check and that's what we're competing against here in uh, Jackson County. Yep, I understand. We're still beating the bushes so <laughs> that's all mine. You only try it, but thank you guys try for another the bush, will you Chief? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's all I have. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Well not uh Unfortunately, nobody here from the park board, but to, I guess Ruben is the liaison, maybe just to thank them for the Easter event that they did do last weekend. And, and uh, thank, thank you to the chief. I did uh, to what uh, Alderman Buzz was talking about. He, I now also have his number because I got called that night and I'm like, sorry, I, mean, I, I called the dispatch. <laughs> right. They told me the same thing. And yeah. so uh, I now have the chief's number as well as uh, Sergeant Turner. So uh, hopefully we won't have a situation where we can't get a hold of because I really right. interviewed the chief point. to call me if you need anything. Yeah, the point being is now we have two of us, myself and Sergeant Turner. So if they can't get a hold of one of us, they'll at least hopefully get, be able to get a hold of them. Hopefully they're not out drinking again. Yeah, you <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, better get the old weed man around. Yeah. <laughs> All right. If there's nothing else, we'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second.
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We stand adjourned.